About 30 to 40% of the American population has a mutation of the MTHFR gene, which is associated with an increased risk of depression. Are you one of those people? Well, in today's video, we're going to be talking about genetics and mental health and specifically the MTHFR gene. And this is in response to one of our viewers, Jeffrey, who asked us to make a video specifically on this topic. So if you would like us to make a video for you, drop your video idea down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first, what is the MTHFR gene? The methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, or MTHFR, is a key enzyme in folate metabolism. It's also involved with folate and homocysteine conversion in DNA methylation. So reduction of the MTHFR gene activation, or enzyme, can actually lead to deficiency in folate and methylation problems. And so the two MTHFR polymorphisms or genetic SNPs that are most commonly studied are the C677T, which Jeffrey says he has, and the A1298C. And so depending on which of these variants you'll have, you'll have different percentages of folate metabolism. You see, folic acid, which is a synthetic form of folate that is fortified in many of our foods or added to many of our foods um, to prevent neural defects, actually has to go through a process of metabolism. And so does the folate that we eat. It has to be metabolized and broken down into L-methylfolate. And it's the L-methylfolate that crosses the blood-brain barrier. And the MTHFR gene SNP or enzyme is responsible for that conversion. So if you have the A1298C variant and you have a heterozygous form, meaning you have a bad gene and a good gene combined, then your metabolism of folate is 88%, which isn't so bad. So you may not have any symptoms or issues. If you're heterozygous for the C677T, however, which is a good and a bad gene of that variant, you now have only 67% of your folate being metabolized. If you're homozygous for the A1298C gene, which is two bad copies of that gene, then your ability to metabolize folate is only 61%. However, if you're homozygous for the C677T gene, which is two bad copies of that strain, then you can only metabolize 25% of the folate that you're consuming. So this is where a lot of people will find that they have trouble if that gene is expressing itself. Now you can also have something called a compound heterozygous form, which is basically a good and a bad copy of each of these genes. And with that, you only get 48% metabolism of your folate. And so the most troubling one is obviously the homozygous C677T. And the prevalence of that in the US is said to be anywhere from 5 to 10%. And that specific polymorphism is what is most commonly associated with neuropsychiatric disorders such like depression, schizophrenia, ADD, autism, and many others. So why is this gene or this um, enzyme, MTHFR, very important for mental health? Well, first we have to understand genetics and epigenetics. So genetics, we have our genes from our parents and that's pretty much what makes us who we are. And then we can have mutations of genes like in Down syndrome, a trisomy of 21, and that we can't change. Then there's these polymorphisms or SNPs of different areas of genes. And whether or not those areas express themselves is called epigenetics. So with epigenetics, um, environmental factors can actually contribute to whether or not these different polymorphisms are turned on or off. And these environmental factors include things like your nutrition, nutritional deficiencies, your diet, your exposure to stress, exposure to chemicals and toxins, and many other things. And so therefore, just because you have the MTHFR gene, 
either one, homozygous or heterozygous, of the C677T doesn't necessarily mean it'll correlate to a folate deficiency. And so that's where labs become very important. And it's definitely something that you should be monitoring. You should be checking not only your folate levels, but your homocysteine levels, which we'll talk about the importance of homocysteine and why you need to check that here in a little bit. And so the way that MTHFR affects mental health is primarily with folate. And folate is a B vitamin, it's vitamin B9. And despite the availability of these fortified foods, we can become deficient in folate when we have one of these variants of the MTHFR enzyme. And folate is a cofactor that's required for many, many functions, including neurotransmitter synthesis. It's also needed for proper DNA methylation and DNA function, like I mentioned earlier. And so when I'm talking about methylation, Methylation is a reaction in a methyl group where a methyl group is attached to a molecule to support many reactions in our body, including neurotransmitter synthesis, neurotransmitter metabolism, different areas of detoxification, uh, breaking down of hormones. It also keeps our genes healthy and is also involved in DNA expression and epigenetics, as well as the breakdown and synthesis of many proteins in our bodies. And so because folate is involved in this methylation process, it affects a certain area of uh, where homocysteine gets converted into methionine. And so when we don't have enough folate, we can't make this conversion. And so we have elevated homocysteine levels, which is not good because homocysteine is inflammatory it's neurotoxic, and it has been shown to be a predictor of cardiovascular disease, other vascular diseases, stroke, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, and of course depression and other psychiatric illnesses. So we don't want elevated homocysteine, and so that's why it's important to get that lab value checked, because if you have elevated homocysteine, you're most likely deficient in some of your B vitamins. And now this increased homocysteine leads to reduced SAMe or S-adenosylmethionine because when you have a proper functioning MTHFR gene and folate metabolism going on, you could actually convert that bad homocysteine into methionine. And then methionine is what is used to make SAMe. But why is SAMe important? Well, in that methylation cycle and in that whole process, SAMe is an important methyl donor. It's one of those attached molecules that, that's helping in the methylation process. So it's involved in a lot of cellular metabolism and methylation reactions. It's also very important with dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and serotonin metabolism and synthesis. And SAMe can actually increase your catecholamines, dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, and also help to increase serotonin. And it's also been shown that in patients who are depressed, they actually have a decreased SAMe in their cerebral spinal fluid. And as I mentioned with um, this homocysteine, it's not just folate that can increase homocysteine, um, there are other cofactors that are involved in this process, such as B6 and B12. Um, so therefore it's important to see if the reason why your homocysteine is elevated is because the MTHFR gene or other genes that actually are involved with processing these other vitamins like B12 and B6. And okay, so what if you have the MTHFR gene? What is the treatment? What should you do? Well, if you have the MTHFR gene and it's turned on, and you have that homozygous variant the, of the C677T, then you can only metabolize 25% of your folate. So most likely you're gonna need support um, a methylfolate, which is that L-methylfolate, in order to make your neurotransmitters. So if you are on an antidepressant, which is supposed to help increase, say, serotonin, but you have the MTHFR gene, well, it's like putting water in a bucket with holes. You've only plugged up a couple of those holes, but you still have other holes in there that you haven't plugged up. So it's putting a Band-Aid on a problem that is deeper than just serotonin. It tells you that you need more folate than probably what you're consuming because you can only metabolize 25% of what you're consuming. So when you look at treatment options, typically what providers will do is put patients on L-methylfolate, which is that bioavailable form that crosses the blood-brain barrier. 
And so the dosages are anywhere from five to 15 milligrams. However, you wanna take it with B complex because remember you, you need those other B vitamins to reduce homocysteine, but also because if you just singularly increase one of those B vitamins, then you're actually gonna create a down regulation of the other B vitamins. So if you just start increasing your methylfolate, you can actually cause a B12 deficiency or B6 deficiency inadvertently. So it's always important when you do supplement with an L-methylfolate that you do so with a bioavailable B complex. What that means is, is that the forms of those B vitamins are gonna be readily absorbed because most likely if you have the MTHFR gene, you probably have other uh, polymorphisms that affect B vitamin uh, metabolism. Now that in and of itself can help increase your neurotransmitter production and get you feeling much better. If you're on an antidepressant, it can also really help your antidepressant to work better. It can even get to a point where you may not even need the antidepressant. However, some people need a little more support, especially those with that homozygous C677T strain. And what I mean by more support is adding in SAMe. Remember, SAMe is that important methyl donor. And so even though increasing methylfolate can help reduce homocysteine and increase SAMe, you may need additional help with SAMe to create these neurotransmitters that your body's needing. And so when we're talking about treating with SAMe, uh, the typical dose is anywhere from 800 milligrams to 1600 milligrams a day in divided doses of two times a day up to four times a day. However, I caution patients with SAMe because it can increase agitation and cause a manic-like um, symptom. And so if you have bipolar, this probably wouldn't be a good supplement for you to use. Um, and when you do start with SAMe, you wanna start low. So something like 200 milligrams twice a day and then increase from there to get to a dose that is effective and helping you. And so when it comes to genetics and mental health, there are things that we can do to support methylation when it comes to MTHFR. However, there are other genetic mutations and polymorphisms out there that can affect your mental health. It's not just MTHFR. MTHFR just gets um, a lot of publicity. And other genes such as COMPT or COMT, which is how you uh, metabolize your catecholamines, can actually have an effect on your mental health. Um, there's MTRR and MTR genes that um, help with metabolizing uh, the different B vitamins like B12, B2, and B6. There's FUT2. There's also CYP2R1, uh, which is important for vitamin D uh, production and synthesis. There's the MAOA gene, which is an enzyme that breaks down your neurotransmitters. There's also the DRD2 gene, which helps with regulating dopamine. And there's just so much, much more. And so it is important to look at MTHFR, but it's also important to look at all of these other genes that could be affecting your metabolism your nutrition, the way you detoxify things, the way you metabolize things or methylate certain things, etc. And so if you're interested in DNA testing for mental health, go ahead and check out the link in the description because I have a couple of packages for services that include DNA testing, uh, one for uh, overall life and mental health, and then one specifically for medications. And so if you're interested in that, check out that link. I also offer mental health labs and blood testing. So if you want to start there, I always think that is a good place to start anyhow. Um, there's a link there to look at mental health labs and I can help you with ordering those labs as long as you live in the United States. Anyhow, that wraps up my video on genes and mental health. And so do you have any experience with your genetics affecting your mental health? Please let us know down in the comment section below because we learn from sharing each other's experiences. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.